The next paper is uh, Benjamin Potter, Fungating Soft Tissue Sarcomas. Thank you. I would again like to thank my co-authors. So soft tissue sarcomas uh, represent a relatively heterogeneous group of soft tissue malignancies of putatively uh, mesenchymal cell origin. Um, some accepted and proven prognostic factors with regard to soft tissue sarcoma management include disease stage and the grade, size, depth, location, and histopathologic subtype of the specific lesion. Historical survival rates at five years for high-grade soft tissue sarcomas have typically ranged from 50 to 65 percent. At the same time, the presence of malignant ulceration, or actually tumor eroding through the patient's skin, has been proven as a prognostic factor for other malignancies, specifically breast cancer and melanoma. And finally, to our knowledge, only nine cases of fungating soft tissue sarcomas have been previously reported in the literature. The purpose of our study then was to evaluate the impact of fungation and soft tissue sarcomas on patient treatment and prognosis. Towards that end, we performed a retrospective review covering a 15-year period of all soft tissue sarcomas treated at our institution operatively. The primary study group consisted of 28 patients with fungating high-grade soft tissue sarcomas. We then constructed a, a control group, again consisting all of high-grade lesions in order to have some construct parity of 151 consecutive patients with non-fungating soft tissue sarcomas. And all patients in both groups were followed for a minimum of two years or until patient death. We excluded patients with Kaposi sarcoma or dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans, two low to intermediate grade malignancies in which cutaneous involvement is the rule rather than the exception. And we also excluded from our primary study group patients who had soft tissue sarcomas with just secondary skin changes without overt uh, malignant ulceration or fungation. Rather, the primary study group consisted of patients with frankly fungating soft tissue masses associated with their sarcomas, or at a minimum, um, some malignant ulceration and breakdown of the skin overlying their lesions. So you can see the key abstracted data points here. Our chief outcome measures were disease-free survival um, as a measure of local recurrence and metastatic disease, as well as those individual rates and overall patient survival. So the demographics for both the study and control groups are shown here. Of note, we did find statistically significant differences with our fungating group patients tending to be significantly older, um, having a longer duration of symptoms as may be expected, and also uh, um, having a shorter duration of follow-up. There is no significant difference in lesion depth or size between the two groups. The most frequent diagnoses in both groups were high-grade pleomorphic undifferentiated sarcoma, liposarcoma, synovial sarcoma, and leiomyosarcoma, with no difference between the two groups. We also did not find a statistically significant difference between MSTS stage at presentation or the proportion of patients that presented with metastases in both groups. However, uh, there were relatively more patients in the fungating study group which, had, which presented with metastatic disease. So the treatment consisted of amputation for 43% of the patients in the fungating cohort versus 12% of patients in the control group. Um, the remainder of patients underwent wide local excision with limb salvage surgery, and one patient in the fungating group uh, died prior to planned operative intervention uh, due to her disease, and uh, thus these numbers don't end up or don't add up to 100%. Um, we also had significantly greater proportion of patients treated with radiotherapy in the control group. And this is due to the fact that in addition to the number of patients presenting with metastatic disease, which was somewhat fulminant, more fungating patients were treated with amputation, which typically does not require post-operative radiotherapy. And there was no significant difference in the chemotherapy treatment rates between groups. So here you see our Kaplan-Meier five-year disease-free survival estimate. It's worth noting that the approximate local recurrence rate was about 14% for both groups at five years. And so the clinically and statistically significant difference you see here in the graph is all due to metastatic disease. And at five years, the fungating group had only about 17% disease-free survival estimated um, versus 52% in the control group. And then finally, looking at our overall survival estimate, um, again, you see 27% for the fungating cohort at five years versus 64% in the control group. 
and there was no difference at all. And this actually was equal in, in the proportion of patients that died of other causes um, between the two cohorts. And that's relevant because our fungating group was significantly older at presentation. Uh, we then went on to perform multivariate analysis. And uh, after controlling for other factors, um, we demonstrated that clinically and statistically significant independent prognostic variables were disease stage at presentation, specifically presentation with metastatic disease, the presence of a fungating mass or malignant ulceration, and tumor size greater than 10 centimeters. And the remainder of the examined uh, variables did not uh, have an independent prognostic significance. So I mentioned that only nine cases of fungating sarcomas had been previously reported. Seven of those nine patients died of their disease um, prior to the uh, limited follow-up preceding publication. In the present study, we've demonstrated um, that fungating soft tissue sarcomas are associated with decreased disease-free disease-specific and overall survival versus uh, non-fungating controls. Um, age was not a critical factor in our series, even though there was a difference between groups in the terms of the number of patients that died from other causes. Um, and the duration of symptoms was somewhat longer um, within the fungating group, which you might ostensibly expect to be a risk factor for a tumor to actually erode through the skin. However, after controlling for age, duration of symptoms, size, and stage of presentation, we still found the fungating mass to be a statistically significant risk factor um, for uh, poor prognosis. And we therefore believe that the presence of malignant ulceration is an expression of an overtly more aggressive sarcoma phenotype. So in conclusion, uh, malignant ulceration is a poor prognosticator um, in the management of soft tissue sarcomas. Um, however, we did not note a difference in local recurrence rates between the amputation and wide local excisions group. Um, within the fungating cohort. Um, so what you can take from that is that uh, although amputation is more often required for fungating masses, um, when it's anatomically and surgically practicable and uh, functionally uh, reasonable, you don't compromise your local control uh, with a limb salvage procedure with a fungating mass. And finally, even though it is associated with a poor prognosis, um, you know, kind of looking for the silver lining in all this, if you exclude patients who presented with metastatic disease in our fungating cohort, we actually had a 63% uh, disease-specific survival at 43 months, and uh, we therefore believe that the presence of a fungating mass is an indication for expedited and aggressive multimodal therapy in an effort to save this important subgroup of patients. Thank you.